It was on the 18th of January 1815 that gravediggers within the Madeleine Cemetery in Paris located the remains of a Queen of France who had been executed in one of the most ruthless executions in the nation's history. Marie Antoinette was during the French Revolution a hated figure, and if someone uttered any words of support for the monarchy, they would often be sent to their executions as well. It was a brutal time in history, with the terror that came following the execution of Marie's husband, King Louis XVI. Marie was hated for many different reasons. Some believed she was a traitor who had sold out the nation to her homeland of Austria, and others claimed she had spent huge sums of money on extravagant purchases, such as jewellery, all whilst the French people were suffering and starving. They could not even afford to feed their families, and people turned to the monarchy for leadership and help, but they got nothing. Eventually the pair fell from grace, and were imprisoned as the revolution took a stranglehold over the nation. But some believed that Marie's execution was necessary for the revolution and France, and many Europeans thought she would be spared and exiled, but this was not the case. After her execution, her body was thrown quickly into a grave, but her body was then dug up, and today she is laid to rest inside the royal mausoleum in the Basilica of Saint-Denis. But what happened when her grave was opened, and specifically what was found? Welcome to the fortress. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Marie Antoinette was taken to her trial on the 14th of October 1793 and she had to answer a number of terrible charges that she found herself accused of. Many of these were false and were aimed at ruining her reputation and this even included the charge of incest that her own son had allegedly been involved in providing information for. This was a false charge as her son had been turned against her and was forced to do this but her lawyers and defence counsel were not allowed to repair a sufficient defence, as the court trial was rather farcical and was not founded in much legality. Marie was also accused of depleting the national treasury by spending huge amounts of money on furniture and luxuries, and she could not really defend her actions in this, as she had done it. She had also hosted lavish banquets, all whilst the French people were starving and suffering, and she was rather oblivious to their strife. She was also accused of handing money over to her home country of Austria, and she was also said to have been involved in plotting large massacres that saw scores of French people killed. The trial did not last long, and two days after it began, Marie Antoinette was found guilty of the three major charges, high treason against the French people, the charges relating to depleting the national treasury, and also conspiracy against the security of the state that would lead to foreign nations declaring war on the French. However, her defence did not expect her to be sentenced to death, and they believed she would be exiled back to Austria, and would be banned and banished from ever setting foot inside of France again. But when the death sentence was passed, there was a lot of shock inside the courtroom, and the rapid nature of her execution would also shock many across the nation. Marie Antoinette was briefly sent back to prison, where she was told to prepare for her imminent execution, and specifically her final prison was said to have been almost like the waiting room for the guillotine, with those who had been condemned forced to undergo the preparation for the execution device. Marie had her hair forcibly cut short to make sure that when the guillotine blade fell on her neck, that her hair would not get caught in the blade, and this could not have allowed a clean execution, and may have even troubled the executioner. She was also forced to undress in front of her guards, and was also made to wear a white dress. Marie wanted to wear black in a manner of mourning, as if she was mourning for her nation. However, the cart then arrived to take her to the execution, and it slowly processed throughout Paris. Further humiliation was inflicted upon her, as a dog lead was even tied around her neck. The crowd hurled abuse and obscenities at her. Marie remained rather quiet, and her confidant and priest noted that she did not say anything. Some claimed that she seemed almost in a trance, and others believed that she probably welcomed the execution because of the fact her imprisonment was so terrible, and many people could not believe what they were seeing. This was the luxurious Queen of France, now being dragged through the streets to her death. At 12.15pm, Marie Antoinette then reached the scaffold, and she was helped out of the cart by guards before she was led up the stairs of the scaffold. 
The guillotine execution device stood high inside of the Place de la Revolution, where she would lose her head. It was on this same device that her husband, Louis XVI, had also lost his head months before, as the blade fell straight onto his neck. Her final recorded words before her execution were rather underwhelming. She did not give much of a speech, but instead stated, Pardon me, sir, I did not do it on purpose, as she actually stood on the foot of the executioner while she was on the scaffold. However, the experienced executioner, who had carried out hundreds of executions on the guillotine, made her ordeal as quick as possible. What was ironic was that the guillotine was actually brought in by Marie's husband, Louis XVI, and he even suggested using a slanted blade rather than a crescent one. The executioner then showed Marie onto the wooden board that she was then secured to, and this was then slid under the blade very quickly. The executioner made a number of final checks, and he then released a blade that fell straight onto the neck of the former Queen of France. Her head was taken clean off with this, and then the executioner approached her head, which had fallen into a basket, and he picked this up and displayed it to the crowd. One painting even shows the executioner showing this to the crowd using a pike, which her head had been placed on. Following this, her remains were then collected, along with her head, and they were then placed inside of a standard coffin. The remains were then taken to the Madeleine Cemetery, a short distance away, and it was ordered that she would be buried in an unmarked grave, with absolutely no marker at all. Madame Tussaud also managed to cast a death mask of her head, and this was later constructed out of wax. But in the years after her execution, the remains of Marie Antoinette and their location were well documented, and inside of the cemetery, guides even gave tours to foreign dignitaries, so they could pay their respects to the executed king and queen. There were even maps created showing where they were specifically buried, and this of course in the years before could have been very dangerous. In 1814 the disputed King Louis XVIII ordered that the remains of Marie Antoinette and King Louis XVI should be located, then possibly exhumed, so they could be given a decent burial. This led to a huge amount of attention inside of the Madeleine Cemetery, and the plan was to then bury them inside the Basilica of Saint-Denis. On the 18th of January 1815, a short time after the investigations began, the remains of Marie were discovered. They found that the correct marked spot on the maps was the location of her remains, and what was found was rather strange. The gravediggers discovered that the coffin had been covered in a layer of quicklime, however this had solidified, meaning that the remains of the Queen had not been quickly decayed, as was intended. The former Queen of France's remains had been given extra protection by this, and they were preserved rather well. On her body were found the stockings she had been forced to wear in prison, and these were exactly the same ones which were given to people who were locked up there. It was also found that these remains belonged to a woman who had been executed on the guillotine, as they indicated decapitation by a sharp instrument or blade but on the skull of the Queen there was even some hair that had remained on this, and also her head had been placed between her legs in an act of disgrace. But following this the remains were then placed inside of a new coffin, they were then buried inside the royal mausoleum. There were some witnesses who wept and fainted as her remains were unearthed, and it was said to have been very moving. The body of Marie Antoinette was then laid to rest inside the Basilica of Saint-Denis, and her remains are still there today but the feelings towards the executed Queen of France have cooled in the centuries following her execution, and some believe that her death was unnecessary and was actually rather cruel. But others believe that for the revolution to go fully ahead, then she needed to die. But when her remains were found, there was an outpouring of grief inside of the small group of people that unearthed her. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again... Thank you so much for watching.